Assalamu alaikum. Bismillah. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yassirli amri. My Lord, open up for me my chest and ease my task for me. Now, today's topic is about the word hadith. Now, in the Muslim world, we all, know what, we all sort of know what this word means, hadith. This is usually associated with the sayings of Prophet Muhammad salam. However, the question is, how does the Quran make use of this word hadith? It's really interesting what the Quran actually says. Let's find out to see what it says. <clears throat> now, first of all, let's look at the linguistic definition of the word hadith. The word hadith, linguistically, in Arabic, comes from the root ha ba va yeah, in Arabic. Now, this typically has the following meanings. Something new or recent. I think it, I think, came into existence began to be, originated, had a beginning, existed nearly for the first time. Now, isn't that interesting? Now, the word hadith linguistically means something that came into existence, something that existed for the first time. Now, what's interesting here is Allah Azza wa Jal also refers to the Quran as being hadith. That's really interesting. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, bring, bring you that verse shortly, inshallah. Now, it also means uh, to, re to relate discourse, story, a report, a narration or a narrative, a statement or tale. That's what it typically means in the Arabic. And we'll see how the Quran makes use of this word. Now, moving on, inshallah. Now, this section here is uh, verses that make use of the word hadith in its linguistic definition. Okay, I'll give you some examples here. In, like how... How hadith is used like in its general meaning, okay? Now, for example, here's a verse. Chapter 4, verse 42. This is interesting. That day, those who disbelieved and disobeyed the messenger will wish they could be covered by the earth. And they will not conceal from Allah a single statement. See, it's got a statement here. Allah hadith. Allah hadith. Isn't that interesting? They will not be able to hide a single hadith from Allah, in other words, a statement or a story or a narrative. Okay, we'll go to the next verse, inshallah. Uh, chapter 4, verse 78. Wherever you may be, death will overtake you, even if you, you should be in uh, loft, within lofty towers of lofty construction. Uh, but if good, good comes to them, they will say, This is from Allah. And if evil befalls them, they say, This is from you. Say, All things are from Allah. So, what is the matter with those people that they can hardly understand? Any statement, see? Hadith. The word hadith is there, which is a, a translated statement. Okay? Here's another verse. Chapter 4, verse 140. And it has already become, sorry, it has already come down to you in the book that when you hear the verses of Allah being recited, they are denied by them and ridiculed. So do not sit with them until they enter into another conversation. Hadithin. Indeed, you will be just like them. Indeed, Allah will gather the hypocrites and the disbelievers in hell altogether. See, the word hadith is uh, translated as conversation. So this is addressing Prophet Muhammad, but when the mushrikim start making mockery of the Quran, do not sit with them. Move away until they uh, go into another conversation, into another hadith. Here's another word hadith used in the Quran, chapter 6, verse 68. And when you see those who engage in offensive discourse concerning our verses, this is similar to the verse before, then turn away from them until they enter into another hadithin, another conversation. And if shaitan should cause you to forget, then do not remain after, uh, and do not remain after the reminder with the wrongdoing people. Okay, the word hadith again is used there. Now here's another verse, chapter twelve, verse six. And thus will your Lord choose you and teach you the interpretation of narratives. This is addressing Yusuf alayhi salam. It says here in Arabic, Tawili. Al-Hadith, the interpretation of Al-Hadith, of narratives, okay? And complete his favor upon you and upon the family of Jacob. And he, he has completed, sorry, and as he has completed upon your fathers before, Abraham and Isaac. Indeed, your Lord knows, is knowing and wise. See, the word Hadith is used here. Where Allah Azza taught Yusuf a.s. the interpretation of narrative. Now, you'll see shortly in another verse, it says the word Hadith means dreams or events, okay? Yep, see also chapter 12, verse 21, and also verse 101. It says something very, very similar. It means, uh, hadith means either narratives or events or dreams. Okay? Now here's another verse. 
chapter 20, verse 9. In Arabic, it Hal ataka hadith Musa. Hadith. Have you heard the story or the narratives about Musa alayhi salam? See, the word hadith again is there. See also chapter 79, verse 15. Now, here's another verse. Chapter 23, verse 44. Then we sent our messengers in succession. Every time they came to them, its nation, its messenger, they denied him. So we made them follow one another into the structure and we made them narrations. We made them hadith, a hadith. So away with the people who do not believe. So the word hadith is used there again. Now, chapter 31, verse 6. I love this. And and of the people is he who buys the amusement of speech. Lahwal hadith. I think in the Arabic it reads, yashtari lahwal hadithi. Right? See, this lahwal hadith, to mislead from the path of Allah without knowledge. And who takes it as, uh, in, in ridicule? Those will have a humiliating punishment. Now here it says there will be those people who purchase the amusement of speech. Now the word here, lahwa, is interesting. Lahwa means, it means diversion. Or it means something amusing or something a sport, something that's entertaining. There will be those who uphold lahwal hadith to mislead from the path of Allah. Now look what it reads in the next verse, straight after this. Look what it reads. Chapter 31, verse 7. And when our verses are recited to him, wa idha tutla recited alayhi ayatuna, he turns away arrogantly as if he had not heard them, and as if there was this deafness in his ears. So give him glad times of a, punish, uh, a painful punishment. Now here clearly it's talking about there will be people who uphold lahwal hadith above the ayat of Allah. Think about this. Look at the Muslims today, brothers. Think about this. How often does this happen? You show them a verse from the Quran. You say, oh, brother, the, the Quran says this. But it says, oh, but in Bukhari it says this. He upholds hadith above the ayat of Allah. Think about this. Lahwal hadith. Diverting hadith. Think about that, brothers. Think about that for a moment. Moving on, inshallah. Chapter 33, verse, uh, sorry, chapter 33, verse 53. Now, this is interesting. You know how Muslims keep telling us over and over again about, oh, we have to follow the hadiths of Muhammad, a.s. We must, must, must follow the hadiths of Muhammad, of the Prophet Muhammad, a.s. But think about what the Quran's telling you. Think about this for a moment. Look what this word here reads. This verse reads, look. O you who believe, ya ayyuhal lidhina amanu, do not enter the houses of the Prophet except when you are permitted for a meal without awaiting his readiness. But when you are invited, then enter. And when you have eaten, disperse without seeking to remain for hadith. Li hadithin. Do not stick around for a hadith. Indeed, that behavior was troubling the Prophet. Trouble, it would trouble him. And he is shy of you, but Allah is not shy of the truth. Now think about this. If the hadiths of Prophet Muhammad a.s. You know, his words, his conversation was so important and binding upon us, then what would I would say, don't stick around for it. Don't stick around for a hadith because this would trouble the Prophet. Think about this for a moment. It troubled him. Isn't that amazing? Now, I'll show you something, uh, something very similar to this in, in another verse, inshallah. Here's another verse. Chapter 34, verse 19. But instantly they said, Our Lord strengthened the distance between our journeys and wronged themselves. So we made them narrations, a hadith, a hadith, and dispersed them with total dispersion. Indeed, in that are signs for every patient and grateful. See, the word hadith, again, is used in its linguistic definition. Here's another verse. Chapter 51, verse 24. Has they read you the hadith of the honored guests of Ibrahim? Now the fact that look the verse one of the verses before remember Hal Ataka Hadith Musa has a story of Musa Richard. Now Allah is asking the question here. Have the hadiths of stories, the narrations of Musa reached you and, and the honored guests of Ibrahim? Now obviously what this means is there were hadiths circulating. There were hadiths circulating. For example, you know, the people at the time of the Prophet, he was addressing the Mushrikeen. The Jews and the Christians said so they would have for sure heard something. They would have had heard stories and hadiths about 
Musa alayhi salam, about Ibrahim alayhi salam, about Jesus alayhi salam. So Allah is asking, have you heard the hadiths about them? But the question is, is Allah saying, whatever you heard of these hadiths, you should go follow them and, and pursue them? Is that what Allah is saying here? No. He's saying, have you heard these hadiths? But the Quran has now come to clarify the truth of these hadiths. Think about that. Allah is not saying, oh, whatever hadiths you've heard, you should go follow them. He's not saying that. He's not saying that. Now, I'm going to get to this, uh, this topic a little later, inshallah. We're going to find out which hadith we must follow and the only hadith. Okay. Chapter 6, 6, verse 3. Now, look at this. This is interesting as well. This is regarding hadiths of Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salam. Look. And, <clears throat> and remember when the Prophet confided in private to one of his wives a statement. Haditham. The Prophet told one of his wives a hadith. Right? A hadith. And when she informed another of it, she went and told another one of his wives, and Allah showed it to him. He said, well, um, uh, I think it was, well, well, I can't remember the word in Arabic. Uh, I think it was. Allah made it known, made it manifest to him. He made known a part of it and ignored a part. And when he informed her about it, she said, who told you of this? He said, I was informed by the knowing the acquainted. Now here, we're told in the ayat that the Prophet told one of his wives a hadith. Now, we're told that the Prophet's hadiths are so, so important and binding upon us. But he says here, he told her a hadith and she went and told another. And Allah uh, made known this to the Prophet. And the Prophet went and confronted her, so, uh, confronted her about this. Now look what he read in the very next verse. The next verse after this. At verse 4. If you two wives repent to Allah, it is best, for your hearts have deviated. Look at that. But if you cooperate against him, then indeed Allah is his protector, and, and Jibir, and the righteous of the believers, and the angels, moreover, are his assistants. Hang on a minute. If the Prophet's hadiths are so important and binding upon us, why does Allah tell the wife of his share in his hadith? Think about that. Allah tells the wives off, for sharing his hadith. I thought the hadiths of the Prophet were so important and binding upon it. And the verse before, remember it says, when you go to the Prophet's house for a meal, do not stick around for a hadith from him, because this would trouble him. I thought the, the hadiths were so important of the Prophet. Look what the Quran says. SubhanAllah. Think about that, brothers. Let's go to another verse. Chapter 85, verse 17. Has they reached you the story, the hadith of the soldiers? The hadith. Allah said, have you heard these hadith that were circulating? Did you hear these? But the Quran has now come to clarify all these hadiths. Does that make sense? Let's go to the next verse. Chapter 88, verse 1. Has they reached you the report, the hadith of the overwhelming event, meaning the day of judgment? Have you heard these hadiths? Obviously there were hadiths circulating at the time. But which hadith do we have to follow, brothers? I'm going to get to that, inshallah. Okay. Verses that describe the Quran itself as being a hadith. A lot of people don't actually know this. But the Quran itself is a hadith. Look what the Quran says. Chapter 4, verse 87. Allahu la ilaha illahu. Allah, there is no deity except him. He will surely assemble you for account on the day of resurrection about the, which there is no doubt. وَمَنْ أَصْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ حَدِيثِ Who is more truthful than Allah in hadith? Think about that, brothers. وَمَنْ أَصْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ حَدِيثِ Who is more truthful than Allah in hadith, in statement? Think about that. Here's another verse. Chapter 7, verse 185. Do they not look into the realm of the heavens and the earth and everything that Allah has created and think that perhaps the upon time has come near? So in what, what statement, hadith, and hereafter will they believe? Which hadith after this will they believe? Think about that, brothers. Which hadith after this will they believe? Have a think about that, brothers. Does Allah want us to go believing other hadiths after this Quran? Here's another verse. Also, chapter 77, verse 50, it reads exactly the same thing. Think about that, brothers. Here's another verse. <clears throat> Chapter 12, 111. This is the end of Surah Yusuf. 
there was certainly in their stories a lesson for those of understanding the, the story of Yusuf al -Islam. Now, here in Arabic, in Arabic read, ما كان حديثا يفترى ما كان حديثا يفترى This never was the Quran a narration invented. See how the Quran refers to, to itself as a hadith? It is not a fabricated hadith, but it is a confirmation of what was before and a detailed explanation of all things and a guidance and a mercy for the people who believe. This is not a this Quran is not a fabricated hadith. Ma, ma kana hadith and yuftara. Think about that, brothers. Here's another verse, chapter 18, verse 6. Then perhaps you, Muhammad, would kill yourself through grief over them, O Muhammad, if they do not believe in this hadith, bihada. The word hadha means this, not that, not those, this hadith. It grieved them that they did not believe this hadith. Does it say anything about the Prophet's hadith? No. The hadith that was sent down to him. Think about that. Here's another verse. Chapter 39, verse 23. I love this. Allahu, Allah nazzala ahsan al hadith. Allah has sent down the best hadith. Kitaban mutashabihan mathaniya. A book which is consistent and, uh, and, and oft repeated. Wherein there is reiteration. The skin shiver from therefrom for those who fear their Lord, and their skins and their hearts relax to the remembrance of Allah. Allah. That is the guidance of Allah. By which he guides. Now look at this. Yehdi, he guides. Bihi. Bihi is singular pronoun. With it, the Ahsan al Hadith, Allah guides to whom, whom he wills. And one who Allah leaves astray for him, there is no guide. Allah sent down the best what? Hadith. Allah sent down the best hadith, a book which is consistent with itself. So this Quran is a hadith. Think about that. Here's another verse. I love this. Look how powerful this is. Chapter 45, verse 6. I'll read it in Arabic, inshallah. Tilka ayatullahi natluhu alayka bil haq. Fabi ayya hadithim. Think about this. These are the verses of Allah which we recite to you in truth, O Muhammad. Then in which hadith statement? After Allah and his ayat will they believe? Have a think about that. Why does Allah even use the word hadith here at all? Why couldn't he just say which, you know, then in what after Allah and his ayat verses will they believe? Why does Allah put the word hadith here at all? Because Allah, from His all-knowing uh, 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 power, He knows that people are going to make up hadiths after this Qur'an. See, so it's saying, which hadith after Allah's ayat will they believe? Think about that, brothers. Look the other verse. فَبِ أَيِّ حَدِيثٍ بَعْضَهُ يُؤْمِنُونَ Which hadith hereafter, after this, will they believe? How else can you translate these verses, bro? Tell me. Here's another verse. Oh, yeah. The verse straight after this. Look what it reads. This is uh, connected. Woe to every sinful liar who hears the verses of Allah being recited to him. Yasma'u ayatillahi tutla alayhi. Then he persists arrogantly as if he heard them not. So give him tidings of a painful punishment. Which hadith after this, after Allah and his ayat, would they believe? Brothers, think about that, man. Subhanallah. Look what the Quran is saying. Here's another verse. Chapter 52, verse 33, look what this reads. فَلْيَأْتُ بِحَدِيثٍ مِثْلِهِ إِنْ كَانُوا صَادِقِينَ Then let them produce a hadith, a statement, like it, like this Quran, if they speak the truth. Let them produce a hadith like this, if they are truthful. Look how Allah uses this word hadith. I'm going to recap this into dot form uh, uh, a little later, inshallah. Chapter 53, verse 59. Then at this statement, Hadhal, Hadith, Hadha, this Hadith, do you wonder? Is it to this Hadith you wonder, this Quran? Here's another verse. Chapter 56, verse 81. Then is it to this statement, Afabi Hadhal, this, to this Hadith, that you are indifferent? See how the Quran refers to itself, the Hadith, the best Hadith, this Hadith, look. Chapter 68, verse 44. So leave me, O Muhammad, with the matters of those who denies this hadith. 
بهذا الحديث this not that not those this hadith will progressively lead them to punishment from where they do not know leave me alone ya muhammad those who deny this hadith conclusion i'm going to recap the verses now have a, have a think about this remember chapter 4 verse 87 وَمَنْ أَصْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ حَدِيثِ Who is more truthful than Allah in hadith? Think about this. Chapter 7, verse 185. Um, uh, uh, what hadith hereafter will they believe? Think about this. Here's another verse. Chapter 12, verse 111. مَا كَانَ حَدِيثًا يُفْتَرَى This is not, this Quran is not a fabricated hadith. Here's another verse, chapter 18, verse 6. Perhaps you would want to kill yourself because they do not believe in this hadith. Hadith, this hadith. Chapter 39, verse 20, uh, 23. Allah nazzal ahsan al hadith. Allah sent down the best hadith. Chapter 45, verse 6. Which hadith after Allah and ayah will, they, will you believe? Brothers, think about these. Chapter 52, verse 34. Let them produce a hadith like this, if they are truthful. Subhanallah, look at these verses, brothers. Chapter 53, verse 59. At, to, so at this hadith, do you wonder? Hadal hadith hadith? Is it to this hadith that you are indifferent? Hadal hadith, this hadith? So leave me alone, whoever denies this hadith. Chapter 68, verse 44. Brothers, look at all these verses. Hadith, 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 hadith. To this hadith, the Quran. Which hadith after this will they believe? Look what the Quran says. Remember the verses regarding Muhammad Ali Salam? It says, do not stick around at his home when you have a meal for a hadith. Don't stick it because he troubled him. Another verse, remember the other verse it reads, the Prophet told one of his wives a, a hadith in secret. Well, if the hadiths are so important of, of, of the Prophet, then why did he uh, say it in secret? Couldn't, should, shouldn't he have shared his hadiths? In fact, the wife does share the hadith, and Allah tells them off because it, it says they've, they've deviated. But here it says the hadith of Allah. Brothers, let me ask you a question. When, be honest, wallahi, be honest. When was the last time you heard a, a khutbah or a sermon or some Islamic uh, lecture s talking about the hadith of Allah? When was the last time? Be honest. I bet never. Never. You've never heard this. I've never heard a, a lecture on this. Never. Brothers, here I'm going to talk about the hadith of Allah. You never hear about this, brothers. Never. Here, yeah, the hadith of Allah. And it says, which hadith after Allah's ayat will you believe? After this, which hadith will you believe, brothers? Of course, the verses I showed you before, it says, you know, there was hadith circulating at the time. Man, uh, have you heard the hadith of Musa? Have you heard the hadith of Ibrahim? Uh, Etc. But is Allah saying you should go follow and believe and those, pursue those hadiths? Or has the Quran come to clarify those hadiths? Think about this. And here's, here's the one million dollar question, brothers. Here's the question I'd like to ask the traditional Muslims. Which hadith or a hadith, plural, did Prophet Muhammad follow? Which hadith did he follow? Tell me, brothers. Which one? Was he given the hadith of Allah and his own hadiths? Think about this. And I've already shown his own hadiths that, you know, Allah says don't stick around for his hadiths. Think about that, brothers. Which hadith did Prophet Muhammad follow? Now, if this Quran is the hadith of Allah, it's the best hadith, which hadith did the Prophet follow? Which one? It's so obvious. Because in the Quran, it tells the Prophet to follow what's, uh, what's revealed to you. There's a verse that says, in attabi'u illa ma yuha ilayya. I, I, I follow not except the, uh, what Allah has inspired or revealed to me. Remember the verse of Allah who nazzal ahsan al hadith? Allah has revealed and sent down the best hadith. So which hadith did Prophet Muhammad follow? There's another verse in the Quran which tells the messenger to say, Qul, say to them, 
innama attabi'u ma yuha ilayya mir rabbi innama i only follow what is revealed to me by my lord from my lord think about it brothers subhanallah think about this question which hadith did prophet muhammad follow and which one are we supposed to follow think about that until next time salam alaikum brothers take care